Good day to you. This is Anagalactic with an ongoing series in astronomy. Currently we're in geometry. That's why you see over on this facing page some geometric stuff. And I'm going to show you how to use a very powerful program which I discussed in the last lecture. If you didn't see that, don't worry. But this is it. Where you see the three lines, click on that and then you can press new. And now we want to turn to these tools which I discussed yesterday. What we're going to do is set up what I think you'll find to be a fascinating little program to demonstrate what I call the harmonic points. And now we want one of these tools. The first one we want is a point. Click on point. It tells you what to do. Select your point and there's your point. The first thing we want to do is right click on it. But before we do that, click up here in the left. That puts you back in default mode. Otherwise, if this is clicked or any of these others, it's waiting for you to make another one. Right click on A and select Rename. We simply want to change that to something other than the default. We want a circle with radius 1. That's called the unit circle. Click on it. It tells you at the bottom what to do. Select your center point and then it asks you for a radius one, OK, and there's our circle. Once again, come back here and click on this. I click on it twice to make the menu go away again here, and then again to make it go away. And now, what we're going to do now is set up two points that are going to be related to the circle. You'll notice that they're blue. This means that they can be moved. Now before doing anything, click back up here and now watch. It won't go off the line because you put it on the line, but if it were a point anywhere, it would be movable anywhere. But it assumes that you want to leave it on the line. That's usually the case, but you can move it along the line. So those two points are movable. I'm now going to right click on this one and rename it to IP. Basically just stands for inner point. These are just conventional names. You can come up with your own. Nobody denies you the right to come up with your own names. Rename. This is going to be OP. These are harmonic points. Not yet, but you can see I set this one up at one half of the radius and this one at twice the radius. If you've been following along with the anagalactic lectures. You can guess what these are for. If not, you're in for a happy surprise. So now we have these two points in a circle. What we want to do is relate them together so that you can move one and the other one will move. Right now, they're set at values of x that are reciprocal. This is 1 over 2. This is 2 over 1. Those, of course, multiply to 1. That's quite significant in circular space. Essentially, these two points multiply to the radius squared. Now, on a unit circle, the radius squared is 1, which is why it's such a useful radius. That's called the unit circle, of course. But these two points also multiply to 1. So these two points together represent the linear aspect of the circle, which for a circle is always the radius, unless you prefer the diameter, which is two radii, and that causes enormous problems. It's really just a nuisance, but uh, because the Greeks chose the diameter rather than the radius, whereas in modern science you always want the radius, you never want the diameter but it's the diameter that gave us pi. Pi is useful for analytical science, but the number you want to know about is tau, because pi represents half of the circumference. That's ridiculous. If you're referring to the circumference of the circle, you want to refer to the entire circumference, but what you don't want is for it to be irrational. That's why we've had all the problems in mathematics that we've had. 
and that's why we can't get rid of any of the problems in mathematics today. It's because everything in natural space is curved, but all we use are straight lines, and that's why the circle is irrational. We are going to change that forever. This will change the way mathematics is done in the future. So I hope you enjoy this. What we're going to do now is use a scripting tool. We want to be able to move this point, OP, so that IP will move in relation to it so they're always reciprocal. I'll show you how to do that. First I'm going to start with OP so we can move that point. Right click, select settings. Go to scripting. You'll see all of these choices. I'm going to go through these. It's in basic. There's color, style, advanced, algebra, and scripting. This is the one we want. Only two of these are useful for our purposes on click and on update. We want on update. The way to know how to enter commands in here is to look it up in the manual. I'll be showing you that later, but for now there's only one command that we really need, and that is called set coordinates, which is spelled set coords. And unfortunately this doesn't have contextual help, but I know this command very well. So what we want is when the value for OP is updated, we want it to update the value for IP. So we select that name, comma, and now we want the X and Y value. This is a 2D, although it does have a 3D. One of the reasons I love GeoGebra is it does have 3D. Marvelous, absolutely marvelous. It's just amazing that this is absolutely free. So this, is, this command is to set the coordinates on the update any time the OP point is moved, which it moves along the x-axis, the IP point should move reciprocally. So we're going to set that up. There's the name of the item that we want to control on the update event. It's called an event. And to do this we need an X value It'll be basically X and Y, but don't memorize that. I'm just putting those in there to show you where the values will go. The Y value stays at zero because the point only moves along the X axis. So you can actually set this to zero. Now the point value for X, we need to tell it a new value. So we've got to think about this for a moment. When we move the OP point, say from 2 to 3, what should that do to IP? We want it to go from 1 half to 1 third. That's the reciprocal. So let's start by typing in 1 over. And now we want the X value of OP. Now let's see if I did this right, and I did. You can see as OP moves, IP moves in, as OP moves out. You may remember this from our quantum number lecture. This is exactly what that is. This is called an inversive circle relationship. These points are called conjugate. They're also called reciprocal. They're also called harmonic. This is an extremely powerful concept which is at the basis of the new number system. This is the beginning of the exploitation of the new algebra, the new number system, and the new geometry for spherical space. We're starting out with a circle and we'll be explaining why. Now we can extend this just a little bit. I want to show you how to use the tangent tool and the perpendicularity tool. The first one that we want to draw is a perpendicular line, so you click on that and as usual it tells you what to do. Select the line, so click on it and now move the mouse. And here we select our point, 
and now we have a perpendicular line. And the best way to do that is when the intersect tool, back here under point, you can see go down to intersect, and it just says select two objects. We want to select the line and the circle. And there it makes our two points. Now we may only want one of those. We could turn it off or turn it on. Or turn the other one off or turn it on. For now we'll leave them both there. These are the two tangent points on the perpendicular of the point IP, which is inside the circle. Now we're going to establish a relationship geometrically between IP and OP. Now we want tangent points. Let's expand this a little. You can see you can zoom. Now we want to uh, doll this up a little so we have some information that would be useful to someone looking at this. Already you've got to say this is fascinating, but we're concentrating on these harmonic points. By the way, IP, if you move that, it doesn't do anything to OP. But we want this to be reciprocal fully. If you move OP, it adjusts IP. We right click on IP, but before we do, let's right click on OP just to see what we did. Go to scripting. That's what we did. Set coordinates, which is written with, this is case sensitive, so set coords. I'll show you where to find these commands, although I'm sure you could find them by yourself. But for now, we want to get through this quickly without missing out on any important points. I'm just going to press Control C and then get rid of this and click on IP, right click, and select settings. Scripting, on update, Control V will paste that. And now all we need to do is change what it says here from IP to OP, because we're going to change that. It's still 1 over X, but it's 1 over X IP. And the zero value for Y remains constant, so we can close this and now we can test it. We want to make sure that when we move IP, everything moves. Does it? Yes. Now, we want to get some information out of this. First of all, and now it still thinks we want to make another segment, and we do B to A. And now one more A. You see, it knows what you're trying to do. And now we're done with that. Now what we can do, now that we have those segments, you come over here and you can see all of the commands that you've entered in are over here. Now I want to show you a trick. These are in creation order. It says construction order here. Uh, there, you see there's four choices. We want object type. And watch what it does. Up here now everything is in its own section. Here's conics. And I just, and that has a circle in it. That's a conic. And we can close it with this little symbol. Here's all the lines we made. Close that. Here's all the points, close that. And here are all of our segments, close that. This makes it much easier to navigate when you have quite a few commands, objects. So we want to turn off the lines that we don't need since we have segments. Click on line to expand that, much easier to find what you want. We're going to turn this off, this off, and this off. It makes it a little easier, I think. Right click on either one and it'll give you the option to rename it. So I'm going to show you something a little here. You, e, so I'll put OP in front, one of the points of the segment, and then in underscore. That will give us a subscript. And then B. And watch how it relabels. And this is IP underscore B. So that's a little more meaningful name. These are the two of the legs, or two of the parts of the right triangle. We want this segment as well, so we're going to click on segment again. IP to OP. 
here if you right click on I you can get away with it but don't forget we still have that segment tool <laughs> highlighted so we rename this is just to do the whole renaming thing in one motion so this is now IP to OP and there we have a nice label which we can now oh look what happened I tried to move it and now what you can do is control Z then go up here and turn it off <laughs> okay so for now we don't want that label so we'll turn that off but if you turn it back on there it is now this is our hypotenuse so let's give it a color settings color let's make that a blue and here it's style line thickness we want that a little thicker and that's good so now we have that and now we're going to do a little bit of magic here all right so to create the circular arc we use this tool circular arc it says select center and two points we want O to create the establish the center then click on A because this goes clockwise for some reason and click on D and it made that arc and labeled it C only this time we want a circular sector and I think you'll like this tells us what to do select the center point and then two points we're going to do the same thing and now click on A and D so now we not only have the arc on the circumference but we also have the sector highlighted the sector in brown is the sector cut off by the arc click on angle tells you what to do select three points or two lines um, and you want the vertex that is the center point to be second and you also want to do it in the right order so I'm going to start with A go to the vertex and now click on D and there you have it get out of the tool by clicking on this arrow over here and now we can move this up here and you see we have an angle of 60 degrees well that's mighty convenient that's one of the magic angles what if we wanted it to be theta how would we do that is the text tool click on that and it tells you what to do click anywhere and now we can get our theta symbol by clicking on latex formula you see it has this pop-up bar down here these are letters but they're not Greek but down here in the lower left you'll see three Greek letters click on that and there are your Greek letters. This is lowercase theta. It does have uppercase theta if you prefer. We want lowercase, that's normal. Now clicking up here, we're going to say theta equals 60. Now we want degrees. So now I can click on this and bring it down here where it's easier to see. So I hope you enjoyed this. To save your work, you click on, on the upper right hand corner, click on the three lines. And I'm going to show you two ways to save this. And you can do both or either one. Click on save and give it a name. I'm going to call this harmonic exercise one and save it. Now that's saving it online, even though this is my desktop version it assumes that I want to save it to my account online if I want to save it on my sheet machine which is my custom it's just how I do things click on download as GeoGebra file it remembered what I might want as a name that is what I want save and now it asks me where to put it. You won't see this, but it's asking me if I want it in downloads or somewhere else. I'm just going to let it put it where it wants. And now I have two copies of this file. 
To prove that, I will select new. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. Oh, it didn't because it knows I saved it. Good. Now we're back at the default. It, it shows you this over here because it assumes you might want it. You don't really need it. All you want is graphing. Just click on it and it goes away. Now to retrieve this file, again, my software is so outdated. I need to get up to speed. You'll be able to see what's on my screen. But when I say open, I believe you can see this. And there's harmonic exercise one. I'm going to click on it. And that'll open it. Now I'll just press new. And it knows I didn't change it, so it just got rid of it. Click on these three dots uh, lines again. And press open. And here's what you won't see. Right above harmonic exercise one, the very first file, you'll see it says local file. Now open right above it goes right back to where we were. If you click on the arrow, it takes you back to where you were. But if you press open and you press local file, you'll see the screen darken a little bit. That's because it's put up a screen for me to open something from my own machine. I'm going to click on downloads and see if it's in there. It is. So I'm going to load it by double clicking it. And that should load it. And it did. So that's the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed that. You now know a little bit about what you can do. These are two related points using a scripting method. You, we also showed how to create this sector, how to create segments, turn things on and off. But very interestingly, we found out we got a 60 degree angle on this rather interesting construction. We'll have some explanation for why that is significant and where we're going to go from here, but it's important to have this tool at our disposal. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to press new. Don't save. I don't. Be, I moved something so it thinks I might want to save it again. I don't. And that's the end of our session. Thank you for tuning in to Anagalactic. Uh, this was a bit long. I'm going to edit it. But stay tuned, we'll be back within a day or two with some more GeoGebra and the harmonic points that convert linear space to circular space. Isn't that marvelous? Stay tuned to Anagalactic. We'll be right back.